Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about one more concept in operating systems that is methods to handle the deadlock situation. So in our previous video, we have seen what exactly mean the deadlocks and what are the conditions that may cause the deadlock situation. And I'll post the links in the description. So just go through that link before starting this video so that you will be understanding what is a deadlock and what are the conditions that may cause the deadlock situation. So without delay, we'll start today's session that is methods to handle a deadlock situation. So mainly in order to handle the deadlock situation, there are four methods. So the first one, deadlock prevention. deadlock avoidance deadlock detection and recovery and finally deadlock ignorance okay so these are the four uh, methods that can handle the deadlock situation so we'll see one by one so in this session i'll give a brief introduction about all these three and in further we'll go in depth right so coming to this first two categories these two methods can be applied before deadlock occurs so these are the methods which can be used before deadlock occurs and these two are the methods after deadlock <coughs> excuse me, occurs okay so before the deadlock occurs and after the deadlock occurs so here uh, the first thing the name itself indicates deadlock prevention deadlock prevention means so before getting the deadlock situation so we have to make sure that the deadlock is not possible that means the scenarios or the processes which we are uh, using and all the things we need to take care such that there should be not be the deadlock so we know the conditions that may cause the deadlock so the, those are the four conditions so one is a mutual exclusion, mutual exclusion and another one is hold and wait, no preemption and finally circular weight. So all these are related to the resources, how the resources are allocated to the processes. Okay, so mutual exclusion means we know that uh, one process can be utilizing the shared resources and hold and wait, uh, all the resources should be allocated to the processes simultaneously. Okay, and non preemption if any one of the process denied the resource, it have to release all the resources which are bind up to that particular process and circular weight. So that exactly causes the deadlock right circular allocation of uh, resources okay so if any one of these condition is satisfied then obviously i mean if any one of these conditions was not satisfied obviously we can say that leads to the deadlock so we have to take care that so while writing the code itself we need to implement any one of these conditions or all the all the four conditions so then we can say there is no a deadlock situation if any one of the thing is processed okay then that is called a deadlock prevention before getting the deadlock itself we are taking care that not i mean that a deadlock situation will not comes right 
and the coming to the second one deadlock avoidance so coming to the deadlock avoidance so we have to collect all the resources that are related to the processes i mean if one process wants to be get executed first we need to get all the resources that are required by that process in order to complete its execution and then we have to take care about allocation of all those resources such that there will not be a deadlock so one algorithm we will be using for this deadlock avoidance that is called as a banker's algorithm banker's algorithm so we are collecting all the resources that are being used for one process and we will be deciding how we can allocate the resources to the processes and the next one so these two are before deadlock occurs we have to take care before the deadlock occurs and coming to the next one that is a deadlock detection and recovery so once the deadlock occurs then the deadlock should be detected and then we how how we have to avoid the deadlock that means once the deadlock occurs then we will be using this deadlock de detection and recovery okay so if any one of this one uh, fails then automatically we say that deadlock will be uh, occurs right so we have to wait until the deadlock comes and then we decide what to do in order to change it so simply what one pro one, one solution for this recovery means killing the processes for example we have said that so for example if this is a p1 and uh, this is a r resource r1 and if this resource is given to p1 and p2 and there is a one more resource r2 and this is given to this one and if p so p1 requires the resource r2 to complete its execution so it was requesting for r2 and which holds by p2 and p2 needs a resource r1 to complete its execution so it gives a request here so this is a deadlock actually we have known right so so once it happens for example if the deadlock appears because p1 completes its execution if it has the resource r1 and r2 but r2 is already allocated to p2 p2 completes only if r1 is available but r1 is allocated to p1 so this is a circular wait okay circular wait and this should not be done and here if the deadlock occurs what we are saying the recovery recovery means one possible recovery is killing out the processes killing the process so if you kill this process automatically whatever the resource uh, it was allocated everything will be done okay then r1 will be available so p r1 will be allocated to p1 so p1 will be completing its execution so killing of process is one solution for this detection and recovery and the final thing is deadlock ignorance so that means just ignore if deadlock appears just ignore so this is the process or this is the method being followed in our operating systems like windows or linux okay so here uh, if any deadlock occurs automatically so the the programmer point of view means the deadlock will never occur and if, if the deadlock occurs that may happens in uh, once in a many years so that's why so they will be ignoring the deadlock okay they will be ignoring the deadlock so this is a common method which are being used in our operating systems like windows and linux operating systems okay so this is a method so these are the different methods that are being used to handle the deadlock situation so in our next session we'll go in depth with the one by one so already we have discussed about the deadlock prevention so that these are the conditions which we have discussed in our previous session and next we'll go with this banker algorithm which gives the deadlock avoidance okay yes so i'll stop here and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much